Here's a quick recap. I was checking because we had no pressure. We've got the three small wires here. That's the sensor. Two thick wires at that side. That's the fuel return valve. I had no pressure on the scan tool. So we did some tests. We've got plenty of pressure at the pump, so we know the pump's capable of providing pressure. We've got the common rail. That also had pressure. The same pressure that I was getting when I went into the pump. So, the reason I did that test twice, testing there, and then again here, in case I didn't say it, because often I don't, I just do stuff and don't really explain what I'm doing. It was just in case there was excessive leak off. So I've had just one injector in cars leaking too much for it to build up pressure. Been able to blank off the injector that's got excessive leak off. Been able to blank that off at the pipe. And it started but ran on three cylinders but it still starts. So then you know what the problem is. And also, I had a, a kit, an actuator kit, so I could plug that up and stop any return going back to the tank and see if I get a rise in pressure. But I didn't need to do any of those leak-off tests or plug that up because I had pressure. If there wasn't pressure though and plugging that up gave it more pressure, I'd have to look to see if that's being controlled. And if it is, then it would be that the valve was leaking, but I didn't go that way. This has already had a similar test. Somebody's clamped the hose that returns the fuel. Right? So the return hose going through here. That hose right there. It's the return from this valve would return it. So everything in the injectors It'll go into the same place, the leak off. So that would have done basically the same test. Just by clamping one pipe, see if there's any change in the pressure. But what I did notice was we did have pressure with a voltmeter here, it's just the scan tool wasn't updating it and showing it to be zero pressure the whole time. However, I have changed the scan tool for a Fox file and it must update quicker and you do see the pressure whilst you're cranking. So then I had some suggestions, and thanks to everyone that had suggestions, it's all appreciated. The easiest one was unplug this. So I did. It still didn't go. However, when I plugged it back in, I had zero grams per second because a few people pointed out, Miles was one of them, it was 40 grams per second with that ignition on and 40 grams per second when I was cranking, and that's not right. I was only really concerned looking at the fuel. I think somebody's done a leak-off test on this and changed the pump, and they still had trouble with the fuel, so I just thought I'd do the fuel checks, get them out of the way. But there, everyone's right that noticed this. That is too much pressure. Ah, too much pressure. That is too much grams per second because it's not even cranking or it's if it is cranking it's still way too high it'd be too high for idle so i check the wires and i do have power ground i got an air temperature and i have the airflow on the very last one at this end and i check that in a pretty similar way to checking this one so the difference is instead of having an analog signal, it's a frequency. And the frequency I'm getting with the ignition on, if I remember right, it was 1.8 kilohertz, which I think is about right for this car. Different cars, different manufacturers may be different. But anyway, that's now showing when I crank it, it's somewhere between 3 and I think it went up to 10 grams per second whilst cranking and drops back down to zero and it's only done that since I've disconnected it and plugged it back in but I am using a Foxwell scan tool instead of the ethos and I think it's just refreshing quicker, it's updating quicker 
So I've done that quick and easy test and it still didn't start. I do have unplugging it and testing it doesn't always work because I've got an early Passat, mine's petrol. And I've done a video on that one where when it was faulty or I unplugged the mass airflow sensor, it's not going to start. I needed to put in a sensor simulator through the wire to get it to start. It just won't start at all if you unplug it. So then I had that in the back of my mind that some cars aren't going to start with the unplug it test. I don't know. This one obviously does because the amount of people that have said try it, but I just, some cars do and some cars don't. So I thought I'd just mention that. That doesn't always work. It certainly doesn't work on that two litre petrol engine. So just to bear that in mind, if that's going to be one of the tests you do, it doesn't always work on a car. So the next easiest test, um, this was Dave Sterl and Sandy Anderson both said check the intake flap. In the manifold we've got the flap that will close when you switch off the engine and then it will open up straight, straight away. And Sandy also sent me a link showing me that, uh, a link to a video I mean to show me that. And I think that's going to be the next check that I do here. I'll open up the trunk and see, although this one looks different, I'm not sure if this actually has one. Now it's starting to rain, which is typical. But yeah, I think this is different, it doesn't look the same. I don't have the piece that he took off. I've got the air pipe. Air pipe there. You see there? It's going straight into the plastic manifold. I don't have the flap. The metal looks like a throttle body part that's that was in between them. So it might be a slight change in the engines. We'll try and get a look at that. And the EGR was the other thing to check. So I'll just try and see what's next easiest to get to. Crank this again. It does sound like it's going to try and go, but it isn't going. KPA is coming up, the grams per second is coming up. Which is quite good now. So I've got a believable fuel rail pressure. The grams per second is coming up, it's just not staying there. Get ready to stop there. It almost wants to start. But here we've got one compression, another compression, another one. It's like it's firing every two. I need to make that more. I need to go back to 100. So we've got one peak. This is just one injector I'm looking at here. All these are one injector and the yellow one is current on the starter. So every cylinder compression, we've got, it fires, so it's starting here, it's like firing, because it needs the ground as well, that one's giving it power, but there's no ground, there's no spike, so nothing happened there, so you've got fired, next silt, next compression, nothing, next compression, it fired, so it's almost like one and four, about firing at the same time. Whether that's something it does during cranking until it identifies which cylinder it needs and then it might just have one cylinder only after that. I don't know. But it looks like the timing for the injector and the fact that it's right about TDC where you would want it to be. You know, if I bring that up, this yellow line can get a good, good view of it to show you right there. Now you can see it. So that's coming out of the EGR cooler. 
and going into the EGR. What else do I see down there? Coolant hoses. That's interested in them just now. That's a coolant hose next to it, and one going that way. Right, so what we're interested in isn't the coolant side, it's the shiny pipe with the corrugated on it. I've disconnected it. If that was stuck open, I'm not letting it start, because occasionally it makes it sound like it thinks it's a you thing, it might just go. I'm thinking, what if it's choking itself with exhaust gases? It's not running, just a thought. Now, what have we got here? One, two, three, four, and the last one is the EGR. It's only four cylinders, the last port. It's four cylinder, you see them? Like one, two, three, four, four, and so that'll be the fifth one. And that will go through the inside of the head onto where the EGR is bolted onto it. On the back side. Light shining on it now, the EGR. So that's the inlet, and it comes out of the EGR, snakes its way around after the cooler, and comes into the intake right here. So I'm going to plug that up with a plug. Okay, ignition's on, it's raining, so I'll try and make this quick. I'm just doing a quick check, that's why I'm going for the easy check, so I'm going to crank it, but look at the plume of smoke coming out of that EGR pipe. Um, this is cranking with the car not starting. I don't know if you're seeing it. And the battery's about dead, of course. So, right. So we know... We know we're getting smoke through there. That pipe comes through the exhaust, so we know the EGR has to be open. Otherwise there would be no smoke there. So I'm, I'm going to try and plug it up, put a battery jumper on it, and see if it'll go. I'm struggling with it for a while. See how gunged up it looks? Right? But it's still got flow, as you can see. It's still got plenty of blow. That didn't taste very good, but I've got plenty of blow, plenty of flow through the. It looks a mess, which isn't surprising considering it's been on and it's been cranking for months. I'm trying to get this going. Not me. It's only my second look at it. Um, but this has been a while before somebody's been cranking it, trying to get it going. Looks like I found the direction, so I'll keep going with this for now. I was cranking it with that open, and it must still be sucking in enough, because that's going to be a vacuum on there. So that's sucking in enough, even though I had opened the pipe a little bit. But then it's still sucking in too much. See, I said whatever's easiest. Well, that plug out of this kit seems to be easiest. Whatever they're messing about. I tried one of these caps on like that, going over the outside of it. But it just wasn't a snug fit. I think this one's going to be... Now that it's squashed it in, I had to force it in a bit because the neck size down was too small. So I forced it in. That should do it, just for testing it. See if I can at least get this to start. And I can take it all off and tell them they need an EGR or if they want to try cleaning it out. No position sensor on that EGR. So I wouldn't know whether it was open or closed. Not from cranking it anyway. So now I'll try this. See, see how I get on. This time I'm using the old Foxwell. 11 degrees C, that's about right. Rail pressure zero, grams per second is now zero. This one seems to update quicker than the snap on ethos. That wasn't changing at all. 
I don't know if it's going to start, but I'll give it a go. I've plugged up the intake going into the inlet manifold. So the pipe's disconnected from the EGR and it's got that plug in it. It was easier than trying to plug it up any other way. Let's check it's out of gear. Okay. Now, grams per second and pressure. Let's see if they change. Got to hit the clutch again. Okay. And it started. See that? Grams per second. Kilograms. Oh, KPA. If we take off the last two digits, hey. Man, it's bar. 288. We're at 10 grams per second. So we know what it is. Now, I might be able to show you something else whilst I'm here. Well, that's great. All the smoke coming out of there. All that smoke's coming out of there because, like I say, it's the exhaust manifold. And the fifth one at the end goes straight through internally in the cylinder head to the EPR valve. Also, like I say, there was no valve for closing the nozzle on this engine. And I know it does on it, I've only seen it. Because uh, Sandy was good enough to send me a video showing me that. Anyway, I hope this helps somebody. Um, once we knew that the fuel was okay, I had a problem with the stencil just a bit from the data. That was misleading. It was almost like I didn't use that stencil. It was that slow update in it. But I was thinking there was no fuel pressure, which is the same as the guy that looked at this before me. They fit a high pressure pump, done a leak up test. And they weren't quite sure where to go after that. And maybe their scan tool was showing zero pressure as well. But when I checked it with a voltmeter, I, I seen that there was pressure. So I knew everything up to the rail and the rail se ceiling. I knew it was all okay. This is fantastic that it's going. And once again, if I've not mentioned you and thanked you, you know, your name. That doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. Everybody that had a comment, it's all appreciated. Um, a while ago, I never used to ask for help. I used to go and spend ages, like hours, searching stuff on Google, trying to find information. And uh, the last thing I'd do was ask for help. And I don't know why it was like that. It was almost like if I asked someone for help, then they fixed the car and it wasn't me. I, was, I don't know, it was stupid because it caused stress. And... Um, it's better not to have stress. So, yeah, all your comments are appreciated. And if I haven't mentioned you earlier, it doesn't mean I don't appreciate you. Everybody that had something to say. Thanks very much for that. But I hope this has helped somebody. Uh, um, I'll maybe just show you the sort of signal that you get at the mass airflow. Right. With the ignition on, the map sensor and the signal wire has 1.8 kilo ohms. I can change that to show you that it's on and off. I'll just change the range so it can bring it down a bit. There it goes. Still need to change the range. That'll do. That'll do. One thing I did notice was it doesn't go straight straight onto the ground so but that's not the problem seeing the top still 1.8 1.84 kilo ohms that's ignition on I'll start the car and see what happens see that's changed to 2.4 kilo ohms now remember, I've got the EGR plugged up, so it's not going to be typical for a, a working one. This is just to show you that it changes. Pick, I'm going to pick up the engine speed. It's 
3000 RPM. And that was 3,000 when it got higher. Okay, so that's one way of knowing your hertz. And you can look at the graph and you see it. It's very hard to tell looking at the graph what's going on, especially today, because you can't see it. Just revving it up. It goes closer together and spreads out when it's at a slower takeover. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and I can give them the good news, all they need is an EGR.